Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Now, this is about the 400 millionth time I've recorded this commentary because the stupid connector for the microphone keeps not working. So I was just going... And you couldn't hear a word I was saying. Anyway, in today's episode of Tube Time, I'm going to build three tube preamps and we'll see which works the best. So, let's meet the tubes. We have a 12A7, which is a dual triode, a 12EC8, this one's a triode pentode, and finally a 6N3P, another dual triode. And this is the one I'm going to try first. This is the circuit that I'm going to build. It's based on this circuit here, except I have removed the load resistor and the output capacitor because I'm going to connect this directly to my scope and I can just simply put my scope onto AC coupling so I don't need that capacitor. Anyway, normally with tube circuits the supply voltage will be between 200 and 300 volts. However, the more observant of you might have noticed 12 volts. Yep. Only gonna operate this from a 12 volt supply. Got this biased grid, and we got this grid biased in an unusual way because it's biased positive instead of negative. And it's biased positive by these two resistors here. And the thing is, if you make the grid positive so it attracts electrons, you can power the two from a low voltage, but personally, I haven't had any luck with those kind of circuits and I really don't think this is going to work either, but let's build it and find out. Okay, so here's the setup for this experiment. So on the breadboard here I've got a sine wave oscillator that puts out about 1.5 kilohertz. And this control here controls how much output we have. It's basically a volume control. So, out from the potentiometer it goes into the tube and also into one channel on the scope which I should really point the camera at before I say anything. I've also got the output of the tube connected to the other channel on the scope and also a secondary camera right here so we can see the waveforms more clearly. So anyway we're going to turn this on. It's all powered from my homemade power supply right here. So let's turn on and see what we get. Okay, you can already see the output from the oscillator right there. Wait for the tube to warm up and it looks like we got a bit of a bad connection there. Okay, tube's warming up. I don't know why the output has suddenly jumped down a little bit. Let me just... Uh, Okay, I think we had a bit of a bad connection there, but everything seems to have sorted itself out. So anyway, I've got the scope on 0.2 volts per division. I'm just going to move this waveform up a little bit so I can count the voltage more easily. So we've got 0.2, 0.4, almost 0.5 volts going into the tube. And just look at that output waveform. That is not good. That looks terrible. Okay, so I'm now going to turn down the output waveform and see if we can get a, a good sine wave. Okay, I've got this on 20 millivolts per division. This one here, I've got that on 20 millivolts per division. So let's see what the voltage is. We've got 20 millivolts, 40 millivolts, 60 millivolts. In. This one is set to 10 millivolts per division, so we're actually getting less right here. If I put these both onto 20 millivolts per division, you can see 
this thing is really just not going to amplify at 12 volts. Okay, so the next tube we're going to try is the 12AE7. And you know the crazy thing about this tube? It's actually designed for 12 volt high tension. Again, I'm going to use exactly the same circuit except... We don't need that resistor, so I'm just going to take that out of the circuit and we'll see how this works. Alright, so this is what's going into the tube from the sine wave generator. I've got this on 2 volts per division, so that's 2, 4, about 5 volts, well, about 5.5 volts. And this is the output from the tube, and I've got this on 5 volts per division, so that's 5, 10... So about 12 volts there. So let's turn the amplitude down to where this isn't distorting anymore. Okay, it's getting nice and sine. Zoom into the input. Let's just move that there. Let's just move that there. Okay. Looks like the input waveform is bigger than the output waveform, but the output waveform is actually much larger. I've just got that zoomed out. Got this set on 0.2 volts per division. I've got this set on 5 volts per division, so we're getting about 10 volts peak to peak out of the tube, which is really good. That's a lot more than I was getting out of the other tube. I don't know why, but for some reason my input voltage and my output voltage seem to be going up and down at random it's kind of weird so I've got 0 0.2 0 0.4 so about 0 0.44 volts going in and about 10 volts coming out so let's crunch some numbers and see what we've got so we have 10 volts coming out the tube let's divide that by what we're, what's going into it which is 0.44 round about. It's a bit hard to tell because I must have a loose connection on my breadboard somewhere. But this is a, approximately what we have. So let's see how much amplification we have. 22. That's actually pretty reasonable. And now finally the 12 EC8. This one is also a 12 volt high tension tube. Using the same circuit except I'm going to make just need to make a couple of minor changes since this this part of the tube is a pentode instead of a triode. So let's just add the grids. It's going to be a bit difficult since the, well, the way this has been drawn, but let's add a screen grid there, and a suppressor grid there, and the suppressor grid is internally connected to the control grid, so I can just draw that in like that. And I'm going to connect the screen grid. It's a bit weird to draw when you're holding the pen sort of against a vertical wall like that. But yeah, going to connect the screen grid directly to the 12 volt supply. And we'll see how this goes. Anyway, here we are with the 12 EC8. And it is definitely, definitely seems to be amplifying. This is, the, uh, this is what's going into the tube and this is what's coming out of the tube. Or valve, or whatever you want to call it. It's so... So much amplification there, my scope cannot show it. So just one, just this here. Now I've got that on one volt per division, so that's one, two, three, about 3.4 volts peak to peak. And this is the output from the valve. As you can see, it is way overdriven. And I've got that on five volts peak to peak. So let's see what the actual voltage we're getting out of that is. 5, about 10 volts peak to peak. But as you can see, that is a major clipped square wave there. Alright, so I'm going to turn down the oscillator. Until this stops clipping. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've got a sine wave there now, more or less. There seems to be a little bit of non-linear distortion going on there, but there's a little jumping around a bit. We've got some 50 hertz crap going on as well. 
Not much I can do about that. Let me just zoom in on there. And let me just zoom in on the oscillator waveform. This is the output from the oscillator. I've got that on 50 millivolts per division. This is the output from the tube. That's 50 millivolts. That's about 75 millivolts peak to peak there going into the tube. And coming out of the tube, we have, let's see now, I've got that on 2 volts per division, so that's 2, 4, 6, about 6 volts peak to peak. So there is definitely quite a bit of amplification going on there. Let's see if I can get that to become more of a sine wave. No, I think we're going to get that non-linear distortion no matter what. Alright, so let's go over to my vintage calculator here and see exactly how much gain we have. So, we had 6 volts peak to peak. Let's divide that by how much, what our input voltage is, which is 75 millivolts. And we have 80! That's actually a lot higher than what I expected. Okay, here are the test results from the three amplifier circuits that I built. So, each tube at 12 volts, the 6N3P gave us no amplification. In fact, I'd said cut the voltage in half. The 12A7 did much better. We got 22 times amplification there. But the winner overall is the 12EC8 with a whopping 80 times amplification. So what I'm going to do is build up that little preamp again, connect it to a microphone. And we'll see how well it works. Okay, so this is the 12 EC8 being used as a microphone preamp. And to prove that this is only running on 12 volts high tension, this wire here is where the supply voltage is coming in, and that is powering both the filament and the plates. This 9 volt battery, all that's doing is it's just providing the power for this little microphone. However, as you can probably hear, the sound quality is... There's quite a lot of background noise. And despite that 80 megabytes, I mean, that 80 times gain, I've really had to crank up the input so I can hear from this thing. It's absolutely crazy. So anyway, that's just about it for me, and until next time, oh wait, I forgot to mention something. So anyway, when I come to edit the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the sound from this tape into the computer so you can hear what this sounds like. And anyway, that's just about it for now because I'm running out of space, I'm running out of camera stunt, I'm running out of camera battery, my mouth is running dry, I really need a drink, so... Until next time, yeah, you know the rest.